أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وبارك وسلم أما بعد جماعة المسلمين أبلاغ البرادس والسستس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله once again we are here for our weekly Juma talk الحمد لله Brothers and sisters, we start off this week with just some announcements first. Firstly, our Deputy Imam, Sheikh Walid Khirdin, is in hospital and he is still under surveillance and treatment. And inshallah, it is requested that we make dua for him. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him shifa, inshallah, kamil and complete shifa, inshallah. Make it easy on him and his family, insha'Allah. And may he recuperate fully and be back on duty again, insha'Allah, which he loves. And then, of course, we make dua of the passing, or we can say the oldest Bilal at the moment that was, Buddha Hanif Kamis, who for over 50 years officiated as Bilal at Al Azal Majid, who passed away this week. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Jannat will pirdaus insha'Allah and make it easy on his family insha'Allah. And then of course brothers and sisters by now you should know that we have decided as a precaution for the closure of the Al-Azhar Masjid indefinitely with immediate effect insha'Allah and may this pandemic insha'Allah disappear for the reopening of the Masjid again, insha'Allah. But at this point in time, the Al-Azhar Masjid, for the safety of all, is closed indefinitely. And then, of course, brothers and sisters, just as a word of caution also to all of us to observe the protocols, that this pandemic is real. People are dying. And we have to take precautions. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the condition of a people. La yughayru la yubikawmi hatta yughayru bi anfusim. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not change the condition of a people unless they change what's within themselves. In other words, we have to engage this with the proper procedures according to the medical advice because they are the people who went in that field of knowledge and with the qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they give us the advice to follow insha'Allah and then of course the last announcement that insha'Allah that from the 20th of December to the end of February 2021 insha'Allah there will be an art exhibition at the Castle of Gudo, the Cape Muslim Heritage Art Exhibition, and that will be administered by our chairman, none other than attorney Ihsan Higgins, insha'Allah. So it is also a very, very important uh, um, activity and focal point where we can educate ourselves and also our children. And it coincides beautifully with the school holidays. So inshallah, uh, there is one way we can further educate ourselves, inshallah. Shukran for having patience with me for that. Alhamdulillah, brothers and sisters, our utmost thankfulness and gratitude to our Creator Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the pathway of guidance to the heart. To the truth. A pathway, or what we say, a sharia, that invites us to a focused life and existence on this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's earth. And brothers and sisters, when we really look at our existence, we ask ourselves the question, from what vantage point, from what viewpoint do we view 
existence. This material existence. How do we experience it? And brothers and sisters, as humanity, as inhabitants with the Qudr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's dunya, we experience this existence from the vantage point of this dunya, earth. That is, we are exposed to a geocentric or earth-centered perception of this material existence. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in the Quran, Surah Al-Imran, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard wa akhtilafi layli wal nahar la ayati li ulil albab. That verily in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the difference between night and day, therein are wonders li ayati. For who? Li ulil albab. For those who really ponder in their observations and investigations. In other words, to view from this geocentric forum the wonders of creation, Allah says. However, and this is, we can say, the theme of the talk today, and that is our perception of existence. And immediately in a material sense, we are drawn by a geocentricness to view creation, to observe creation, to ponder about creation. And when we look at the Quran, the divine guidance, over 900 ayat, 950 plus, draws the attention to this geocentricness of the wonders of nature. However, the Quran in actual fact also guides so that humanity should utilize this geocentric or earth-centered view in order to shape and construct a view and understanding that leads to beyond this material existence. That is, my brothers and sisters, to, in inverted commas, to see through this temporal existence this timeless existence, time-constricted existence, and come to the realization of the real existence beyond this temporal or hadith existence. For as Allah said in the Quran, Surah An-Nisa, قُلْ مَتَعُ الدُّنْيَا قَلِيلٌ وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى وَلَا تِظْلَمُونَ فَتِيلًا قُلْ Inform them, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the enjoyment of this world مَتَّعُ الدُّنْيَا قَلِيلٌ It is but a short span of time. It's a moment. وَالْآخِرَةُ And the آخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لِمَنِ اتَّقَى that the akhirah, the next level of existence, beyond this temporal existence, it is much better for those limani taqwa who develops that taqwa, that understanding, that vision, that consciousness. Wala tudlamuna fatila. And be sure that no one, you will not be dealt with unjustly. Fatila, in the very least, like the Arabs would say, a dead pit. 
you will not be dealt with unjustly. So there we can see how the Quran, as the Quran draws the mind to fuse seamlessly the connection between revelation and reason, here the Quran then further draws the mind that our experience of this existence, that the material experience, if it is according to the Quran and Sunnah, will then bring the realization of the existence beyond this existence. And that is the Akhirah. In order that humanity should develop that perception and not fall prey to this existence, not fall prey to greed, cruelty, and all the things you see happening today. So here we see, brothers and sisters, the divine guidance inviting us, showing us, in fact, to use the wonders of this world to realize the underlying wonders of the real existence, the Akhirah. In other words, if this existence was incomprehensible to us before we came here, how incomprehensible must be the Akhirah to which, without a shadow of doubt, we are traveling to. And as the Arabic idiom goes, to say, Ad-dunya mazra'atul akhirah. That the dunya, if we really think about it, according to Quran and Sunnah, Ad-dunya mazra'atul akhirah. That the dunya is a plantation for the akhirah. And once we have such an idea, such an understanding and perception, we will not tie ourselves to this dunya as we see today with horrific consequences. And Allah says further in Surah Al-Imran, وَمَا لَحَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَا And what is the life on this, in this world? Except but it is an illusion, a passing phase. So in order then to develop a creator-centered perception by way of the Quran and Sunnah, we have to use our rationality. This rational investigative approach is then absolutely necessary. And thus Muhammad وسلم, came, was sent to guide humanity practically to not fall prey not fall victim to this illusionary experience, but instead to use it to develop a consciousness and awareness, and we say Iman, and that is that the belief in the one creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, to become aware and to realize that there is an existence beyond this existence. And in this way, we develop a Quran and Sunnah-centric focus in life by means of the instrument of Iqra or rationality, thinking, as the Rasul Sallallahu guides us say, Kum pid dunya ka anna ka gharib wa abir sabir wa udu nafsaka min ahl al -kubur. Be in this dunya as if you are a stranger, or Amir Sabil, or a traveler, and read yourself always to become one of the Ahl Qubur. In other words, continue your journey into the Akhirah. Because in such a way then, the perception then will not only be geocentric, but it will be Quran centric using the dunya as a mazra, as a plantation for the akhirah, we will then be able to partake, to really partake in the universal and cosmic conversation with nature. We will really be able to see in inverted commas the significance of the arcans of the deen 
in laying a foundation of true growth in order not to succumb to materialism or the materialism of greed, of cruelty, of corruption that we see today, whether it is in our own cities or country or across the world. We will be able then to see the physical and spiritual hygiene, cleanliness of life, physically as well as mentally, intellectually, spiritually, of the Qur'an and the practicality of the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We will then be able to see also, brothers and sisters, how the Qur'an develops what we can call the intellectual osmosis so that we can be highly selective to choose that which is of value in this existence to develop the Iman, the consciousness, and to expel from our minds that which is not of value and therefore not beneficial. And thereby, not to fall prey, as we see today, to the so-called norms that is being foisted upon humanity, whether it is here or wherever we are across the globe. Thus, as Joseph Nuan in his work says, in his work, Islam and European civilization. He says, and I quote, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam provides a discipline which is irreplaceable. You can't replace the Quran. You can't replace the Sunnah. It is timeless. And why is it timeless? Because it is divine. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ma yantiku anil hawa in wa illa wahyu yuha that which Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advises you, shows you it is, does not come from itself except it is wahyu it, so it is ilham, it is divine inspiration sorry, it is divine inspiration ilham and as Fred McGraw Donner in 1991 said, and I quote, he says, the ethical nature of the prophet's teachings is what ultimately attracted and led the Arabs of Mecca to adopt Islam in mass. The ethical nature. It is a discipline which is irreplaceable, as Joseph Nuan says. The ethical nature of it is free. In other words, it is incomparable. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us, who it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who had sinned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger Muhammad sallam, with the guidance that no other guidance and truth can be compared with. And it is enough that Allah is the witness that Muhammad sallam, is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whether Muhammad sallam, is being ridiculed by people who has no self-respect and they have no other respect for anyone else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa kafa billahi shaheeda is the witness enough that Muhammad sallallahu is the messenger. Hence, brothers and sisters, we can then say Islam guides humanity to a sharia intelligence in order to realize what we would say, the mu'amalat, our deeds, and the ibadat, our acts of sincere devotion for the sake of Allah 
and Allah alone in service to humanity. And in such a way to move far away from a self-centered, arrogant attitude so prevalent in the world of today. We see what is happening. I don't need to mention, we all know we see it on the news and all. That is this way to develop a Quranic and Sunnah centered position and attitude. For as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to us in Surah al Namr, Alladina yuqimuna salata wa yuqtuna zaka wa hum bil akhirati hum yuqinun. So simple. Those who are constant in prayer and the dispense of zakah, they are those who in the innermost are certain of the next level of existence. And the zakah there, where the eye was revealed, zakah was not part of it. Zakah means to contribute value to the growth of humanity. And today we see that is not taking place. Once again, far away from dealing with this dunya as a protection for the akhirah. This, brothers and sisters, is what Islam offers humanity. This is what we really need, especially in the time with which we are living. The time in which humanity is actually forsaking its own humanity. We're insulting our own humanity with the deeds that we are doing. So brothers and sisters, let me just reiterate. Observe what the Quran and Sunnah teaches us. Use our Allah-given intellect to try and understand the context of our situation and respond accordingly. And this pandemic also it is very real. We have to take precautions. We have to be proactive and not reactive. So may we, inshallah, with our effort, work towards and inshallah achieve real success in this dunya on our way to the akhirah, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that with our effort. Juma Mubar to each and every one. Shukran. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.